was often referred to as Britain's most evil woman. Myra Hindley, who aided in the murder and assault of five children in the 1960s in what became known as the Moose Murders, claimed that she did so because her abusive lover forced her to. Just where can one find the truth? Exactly. Myra Hindley and her lover Ian Brady abducted four children between 1963 and 1965 under the guise of giving them a ride home. The victims were Pauline Red, John Kilbride, Keith Bennett and Leslie and Downey. Saddleworth Moor is a remote area about 15 miles outside of Manchester, so that's where the two took them. Hindley would then claim that she had lost a pricey glove and enlist the victim as assistance in locating it. Everyone complied, and they all followed Brady into the reeds in search of the missing garment. Brady assaulted each kid and then slashed his or her throat once they were well out of harm's way. They took the bodies to the moor and buried them there. The bodies of all the victims have not been located as of yet. Jean Ritchie, author of a book about the Moose Murders, published in 1988 under the title Myra Hindley. Inside the mind of a murderess, claims that Hindley was raised in a repressive, impoverished household where her father regularly beat her and encouraged her to use violence to solve conflicts. Hindley met Ian Brady in 1961, when she was 18 and working as a typist. She became obsessed with Brady despite learning that he had a history of burglaries. Brady took his date to a movie about the Nuremberg trials for their first outing together. Brady thought the Nazis were interesting. He was very interested in Nazi criminals, and once he started dating her, they would spend their lunch breaks reading aloud from a book about Nazi atrocities. Then, to look more like the Aryan ideal, Myra Hindley dyed her hair blonde and started wearing dark red lipstick. Later, they talked about how they could make a lot of money by robbing banks together. However, they settled on murder as a preferred method of expression and committed their first known murder in 1963 against Pauline Red. On July 12th, 16-year-old Red was being driven to the moor by her date, Hindley, after being persuaded to get into the car by the promise of a dance. Inexplicably, her body wasn't discovered until 20 years later, still dressed for the party and bundled up in her blue coat. A year after Iadez's death, two more children, Keith Bennett and John Kilbride, met the same fate. The couple's most heinous crime, however, would be committed in December 1964. At the fair, Myra Hindley and Ian Brady tracked down a lonely 10-year-old named Leslie and Downey and persuaded her to help them unload their groceries from the car. They eventually arrived at Hindley's grandmother's house. Downey was bound and gagged after being stripped naked inside the home. When she pleaded for assistance, they made her pose for photos and filmed her for 13 minutes. Later, Ian Brady raped and murdered Downey. They stopped their brutal killing spree in 1965 when Ian Brady moved in with Myra Hindley at her grandmother's house. David Smith, Hindley's brother-in-law, became a close friend of the pair. Brady had asked Smith to stop by later that evening to bring back a few bottles of wine. While Smith waited for Brady to bring the wine, he heard Brady murder 17-year-old Edward Evans with an axe. At first, Smith was willing to help dispose of the corpse. Back at home, he broke the news to his wife, who also happens to be Hindley's younger sister Maureen, and the couple decided to file a police report. The couple was taken into custody on October 7th. In the beginning, they both claimed not to know anything about it. Fortunately, the police followed Smith's lead and discovered the evidence of Downey's torture in a suitcase at a train station. Myra Hindley's home was searched and a notebook with the name John Kilbride scribbled all over the pages was found. After photos of the couple were discovered by police on Saddleworth Moor, a search of the area ensued. 
When authorities found the bodies of Downey and Kilbride, they arrested Myra Hindley and Ian Brady on three counts of murder. Two weeks were spent on Brady and Hindley's trial, but the jury only needed two hours to reach their verdict of guilty. The preceding judge, Fenton Atkinson, referred to Brady as wicked beyond belief, but he didn't feel the same way about Hindley once she is removed from Brady's influence. Nonetheless, for the murders of Moose, both were given multiple life sentences. Hindley allegedly suffered abuse at the hands of Brady and did not speak out about it until 1998, more than 30 years later. Most folks assume that I'm the main bad guy here, the one who started everything. I just think it's important for people to know what happened. To explain to others how I became involved and why I continued to do so, she explained. Before the offences, after the offences, and throughout my time with him, I was subjected to duress and abuse. Once upon a time, he would yell at me, rape me, whip me, and cane me. Assaulting my loved ones was one of his many threats. He was totally in charge of me. She claimed to have experienced intense guilt over the murders, even breaking down in tears after seeing a missing persons ad for Pauline Riades' family. Still, it wasn't until 1985 that Ian Brady and Myra Hindley admitted to the murders of Red and Bennett. It took nearly two years for Hindley to bring police to the moor, but she eventually did so, and they found Riades' body with her help. However, Bennett's body was never found, and police have no plans to reopen the investigation. An earlier psychological assessment of Hindley, which was released to England's National Archive after her death in prison in 2002, contradicted her claims that she was a victim. It was never a question for me as to what was morally correct to do. To kill was not something I felt compelled to do. That doesn't mean I got to sit on the sidelines and watch. Yet I was more responsible than most because I had more information at my disposal. The life of Myra Hindley was spent behind bars. Despite her insistence that she did not commit the murder of Leslie and Downey, she was never granted parole. Instead, she said that she went to get a bath for Downey, and when she came back, Brady was already dead. However, in the book Face to Face with Evil, Conversations with Ian Brady, Brady insists that Hindley killed the girl herself. Myra Hindley, while incarcerated, returned to her Christian faith, earned a degree from the Open University, and severed ties with ex-boyfriend Ian Brady, who is now being held at a high-security psychiatric hospital in northwest England. Innocence, at least of a certain kind, may be indicated by Myra Hindley's apparent desire to better herself and her insistence on being brainwashed. However, her efforts at redemption are meaningless in light of the fact that five children's bodies were stolen and disposed of under her watch.